Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Let's get things started. Uh, Brian Kelly had his SEC teleconference appearance earlier today. He leads that off, and as you would expect, the first couple of questions that he got were about the developments uh, in the situation that arose earlier this week with Greg, or last week with Greg Brooks. He was held out, said it was a medical situation. It was a situation that his family was going to have to talk about before he brought any further details. And last night, the report came out, and LSU released a statement saying that Greg, Greg Brooks did have a brain tumor and an operation. Uh, they removed uh, a good amount of that brain tumor or all of it, and uh, they'll just have to get the biopsy and see what further steps need to be taken for him, which is obviously a very, very scary situation for Greg Brooks. But I guess if you want to look at it as a positive, it is a positive they did catch that and were able to get him on the operating table. And now it's just a question of how things move forward. And Brian Kelly was asked about Greg Brooks earlier today. We were trying to find out what you know the symptoms were and he had another uh, episode, Disney, you know, he had dizziness again uh, on Thursday of, of uh, exact, actually, I think it would have been Wednesday of, of last week. Finally, we said that enough's enough, and, and we got a, um, a an MRI, and that's when um, the tumor was, was, uh, was located. So, you know, the vertigo was just a symptom uh, of what was obviously a larger issue. It's just scary stuff, and it's stuff that we heard about in camp that Greg Brooks was dealing with some vertigo issues and um, had some dizziness and missed some time. And, and if you get that, you never really think too much of it. It's hot out there, and sometimes guys get some heat-related symptoms and have to miss some time, and it's not anything that we think twice about. But when it continues to recur, obviously they wanted to, to get a look at it, and they got the MRI, checked it out, and, uh, and, and found you – know, the cause of it, which I guess is, is a positive thing uh, in that sense, but it's, it's very, very scary. No question. And so the question that was raised after that was, okay, well, we know what it is now. Is it possible that Greg Brooks could potentially play this year? That's so hard for me to, to even know, you know, what there, there are so many unanswered questions. I, I don't even know that I could even begin to, to give you the medical pieces relative to the, the surgery to even give you um, an educated answer to that. I saw him in the hospital on Sunday. You know, he's still coming out of, uh, you know, heavy sedation. So we weren't able to have a, a lucid conversation. But I know before he went in, <laughs> he he was pretty he was pretty clear about playing again this year. But that's that's Greg Brooks. And obviously that's that's what a young person wants to do. They want to want to get this figured out and get it get rid of it and then go play again. That's that's how we're wired. Obviously we know that that's not necessarily the way that it always works. Our, our certainly continued thoughts and prayers and are with Greg and his family and and the doctors that are are surrounding him and and you hope for the best outcome possible, which is a full recovery. And if that means playing some more football this year, that's fantastic. If it doesn't, that's just just part of it. But his health certainly comes first. But from an LSU perspective. Our job's kind of to sit here now and go, okay, well, what does that mean for this LSU team? We know that this group struggled mightily in the secondary in their opener. Um, Florida State kind of threw it all over the place. You don't get a great test against Grambling, obviously, but without Greg Brooks in the Mississippi State game, LSU's defensive backs played better. Now, they got a huge boost from the pass rush, which was significantly better against Mississippi State than it was against Florida State, and Florida State's quarterback is much more adept at moving in the pocket and extending plays than Will Rogers is at Mississippi State. But here's the situation that LSU's defensive backroom finds it in. Um, and we want to start, obviously, with safety, where Greg Brooks was logging most of his snaps. Um, Major Burns continues to be a starter and, and really a, a key guy in the back of the defense. But Andre Sam would step right in. And I believe that there is a negligible difference between Greg Brooks and Andre Sam on the field. Uh, their measurables are not wildly different. Uh, they're both very, very old college players. Uh, neither is flying up draft boards anytime soon, but both are accomplished veteran players that you can count on to be in the right place and, and to make some plays. It hurts LSU not to have Greg Brooks because it hurts your depth there. And there were times, especially in fall camp and then moving into the season, where you could look at LSU's secondary and say, well, 
they may be best suited to have three safeties out there. Having Major Burns, Andre Sam, and, and then maybe Greg Rook sliding down to the nickel or the dime is better than some of the corner situations that they've got. And so that was just a situation that the cornerback coaches were going to have to, and, and secondary coaches were going to have to to deal with. You've got Robert Steeples, you got Kerry Cooks, and hey, how are we going to cook this thing up? And now you lose Greg Brooks for you know, X amount of time. Sam stepping in, I think it's a negligible impact. You do hurt your depth significantly because after Sam at safety, you're looking at Ryan Yates got a look at the end of the game last week. Sage Ryan, I guess, could back up and play some safety if you needed him to. Jordan Allen has not been called upon to play in his LSU career very much. You've got freshman Kylan Jackson, JV and Toviano, who haven't been asked to play. So really, it's Major Burns and Andre Sam, and not much after them at the safety spot. At corner, you've still got Zy Alexander. You've still got Denver Harris. You've still got Deuce Chestnut. Sage Ryan can still play down there. You're working Ashton Sampson. LaTerrence Welsh is now in his second year. So you do have some options at, at corner um, if you have to pull Sage Ryan back. But that's basically what you're looking at in the secondary. We just, well, I shouldn't say we. I don't want to speak for you, the listener. I don't want to speak for uh, anyone else here at the station. I will speak for myself. I personally don't know exactly what this secondary is. My concerns were massive in August. They were massive the first week of September, and they were amplified when we watched this group play Florida State. I can't get any read on anything against Grambling. I realize they put Denver Harris in there to start, and Grambling goes down the field, and they beat Denver Harris for a touchdown, and then he gets a pass interference, and that doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies inside. Okay? But... Last week against Mississippi State, Will Rogers struggled to find a lot of places to go with the football, and that's a good thing. You probably take a little bit of a step up in terms of functionality of the offense with Arkansas. They're not great, and their offensive line has struggled, but they do have a, a quarterback who's probably more comfortable in his system than Will Rogers is in his. And you'll get down the road to Jackson Dart, who's very comfortable in his system and is a really good player. And you'll get down the road to, yes, Connor Wigman and this A&M offense that does have some playmakers. And you'll have tougher matchups as time goes on. And we'll learn what this secondary is. I'm hesitant to call it either way at this point. I would say concerned is very fair for me. I would say uh, I certainly haven't given up on them. I think there's absolutely an opportunity for the secondary to get better. However, you're going to have to do it without one of your captains back there in Greg Brooks for the foreseeable future. Certainly not going to play this week, and I wouldn't imagine going to play for the next few. That's just my guess. I'm not a not a neurosurgeon by any stretch of the imagination, but that's just where I, I see it. So um, do I think it's a debilitating blow? No. Uh, do I think it matters? Yes. Do I think there's a significant drop-off between Greg Brooks and his immediate backup, Andre Sam? I don't. I think LSU is is a similar secondary in the first team on Saturday as it was when they went out there against Florida State two weeks ago. Well, better than that because Denver Harris is now available. So it, it, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. It, it might not be this week that, that we find out, but when you go to Oxford, you'll know. So, again, our thoughts, prayers, um, all the good vibes headed towards Greg Brooks and his family uh, as they uh, – they, they look forward. They look through this this really difficult challenge, but hopefully the doctor's there and, and everything goes great, and he's uh, back in action before we know it. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.